क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम ई कीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस वीडियो वी आर विद द थर्टीन चैप्टर ऑफ माइक्रोवेव इंजीनियरिंग द चैप्टर इज टाइटल्ड माइक्रोवेव मेजरमेंट्स सो फार इन दिस चैप्टर वी हैव फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सीन हाउ एग्जैक्टली द लो फ्रिक्वेंसी मेजरमेंट्स कैन बी डन नेक्स्ट टू दैट वी हैव बीन इंट्रोड्यूस टू द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉम्पोनेंट इन टू द माइक्रोवेव टेस्ट बेंच कॉल्ड एज स्लॉटेड लाइन वी हैव बीन ऑल्सो इंट्रोड्यूस टू द ट्यूनेबल डिटेक्टर एंड हैव बीन गेट familiarize with the significance of this tunable detector the double minimum method we have seen to have the measurement of vswr called for the standing wave ratio if we take the voltage labels into consideration so based on to all these understandings let us have problem number 1 so here we are provided with the problem statement for vswr measurement it begins with calculate swr of a transmission system operating at 10 gigahertz assume te10 wave transmission inside a wave guide of dimensions small a is equal to 4 cm small b is equal to 2.5 cm the distance measured between twice minimum power points is equal to 1 mm on a slotted line so this completes the problem statement now we shall be determining first of all what is asked in this problem statement so to read the problem statement in the very first line it is mentioned that we have to calculate the swr so swr or simply vswr you take that is generally represented by rho also is to be calculated vswr rho is equal to what is the question here and now what is given to us in the problem statement now the vswr is to be calculated for the transmission system operating at 10 gigahertz so 10 gigahertz is the value of frequency giga for 10 raised to the power 9 a multiplicand here now in the transmission system where we have been provided the dimensions small a and small b so it means that it is a rectangular wave guide here because for rectangular wave guide cross section we have the two dimensions broader dimension small a and the smaller dimension small b here if it would be the case of circular wave guide we would have been given only the one dimension that is the radius value small a here so it is very clear rectangular wave guide the dimensions we have the mode of propagation is also mentioned te10 this is the dominant mode into the wave propagation for rectangular wave guide so dominant mode it means it is offering the lowest possible value of cut off frequency or in terms of wavelength it is the maximum possible wavelength while having the microwave propagation inside the wave guide there now one more information is given to us in this problem statement that is very very important to us to calculate the vswr that we require the distance measured between twice minimum power points so this is the value given to us as in the previous video while we have gone through vswr measurement the double minimum method was used there so it uses this particular value here so very first of all with the use of the slotted line the given details and some another details we shall be noting down and we shall be making the use of formulations to compute vswr so here very first of all the given data we have so to read the problem statement we come to know the operative frequency over the transmission line that it is rectangular wave guide f is equal to 10 gigahertz it is equal to 10 into 10 to the power plus 9 hertz we can write along with the frequency we have the dimensions for rectangular wave guide a is equal to 4 cm so in si system of units we have 4 into 10 to the power minus 2 meters here whereas b is equal to 2.5 cm so this is equal to 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 2 meters here the mode of propagation te10 mode so because of mode of propagation te10 we have 
TE suffix MN. So small m is equal to 1 and small n is equal to 0 here. Now the distance between the two minima we have been representing D2 minus D1. So that value is 1 millimeter. So 1 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 meter cities. Now as per the problem statement as we require the value of VSWR, VSWR is given by the formula where we represent VSWR is equal to lambda suffix G divided by pi in the bracket D2 minus D1. So let us say this is equation number 1 to calculate VSWR. Now the question is to have calculation of VSWR whether we have all these values or not. What is lambda sub g? It is the guide wavelength. We have just now noted the given details from the problem statement guide wavelength is not at all provided to us. So we have to calculate it. D2 minus D1 this difference is given to us that is 1 millimeter. Pi is a constant the constant value 3.14 or 22 by 7 you can use here. So very first of all we need lambda g to be calculated the guide wavelength. So the lambda g we have one formulation to make computation. So it is equal to lambda 0 divided by we have in the denominator a square root that involves 1 minus lambda 0 by lambda c the bracket is to be squared here. So let us say this is equation number 2. Now to determine the value of lambda j that can be used here in equation number 1 we require lambda 0 and lambda c. So are we having the lambda c value lambda 0 value? See lambda 0 is the wavelength of the microwave signal outside the bound medium. So we don't have this wavelength value but we have the frequency value so therefore we can make the use of formulation that lambda 0 is equal to c by f where c is the velocity of light into the air or free space. So c is equal to 3 into 10 raised to the power 8 meters per second or when you substitute the values in terms of centimeter per second this is 3 into 10 raised to the power 10 centimeter per second here. So this will lead to the value of lambda 0 is equal to c divided by f. f is given to us. So the value becomes 3 into 10 raised to the power 10 in terms of centimeters divided by we have the value of f that it is 10 into 10 raised to the power plus 9. So 10 into 10 raised to power plus 9 becomes 10 into 10 raised to power 10 which can get cancelled and this is left with 3 only. So as we have substituted the values in terms of centimeter per second lambda 0 is of centimeters range. So this is the intermediate value lambda 0 is equal to 3 centimeters or 3 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 meters that can be used in equation number 2 here. Now in equation number 2 the next parameter we require lambda c. So one thing is we can make c upon fc but do we have the cutoff frequency? We don't have. We had only the generalized frequency f of 10 gigahertz here. Now let us use the another value into the given details. The another value in the given details is that we have the dimensions of internal cross section for the rectangular waveguide as well as the mode of propagation. The mode of propagation is the dominant mode Te suffix 10 and the dimensions small a and small b both are available. So now we know that for Te10 mode we have the cutoff wavelength the maximum possible wavelength is equal to twice a here. So a value is equal to 4 centimeter therefore 2 into 4 centimeters if we put here lambda c value will be equal to 8 centimeters or you can put 8 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 meters here. 
so we outline this particular value now we have lambda 0 as well as lambda c now from equation number 2 we can now calculate lambda suffix g is equal to lambda 0 divided by square root of 1 minus lambda 0 by lambda c the bracket is squared here so by the next step we substitute the values in terms of centimeters this is 3 centimeters for lambda 0 divided by square root of we have 1 minus 3 divided by lambda c is 8 centimeters so this is to be squared here so finally this computation on to the right hand side gives us the value of guide wavelength lambda g is equal to 3.236 centimeters here or lambda g is equal to 3.236 into 10 to the power minus 2 meters here so both the values i outline so these values have been come from equation 2 here now these values can be substituted into the equation number 1 so we write therefore equation number 1 implies vs wr is equal to we had lambda g divided by pi in the bracket d2 minus d1 here so the lambda g value just now have been calculated in terms of centimeters it is 3.236 and this is divided by pi times d2 minus d1 1 millimeter it is in terms of centimeters it will be 1 into 10 raised to the power minus 1 so substituted all the values constant value 3.14 will result into the vswr is equal to 10.3 here so i outline this value vswr voltage standing wave ratio is a ratio here and it is the ratio of the same kind of the quantities the voltage here so therefore it does not have any kind of unit here so this was the required answer for the problem number one for vswr measurement so we get back to the problem statement this was our problem statement and for the given details of mode of propagation frequency internal dimensions of cross section and the distance between the two minimas here now we are successful to determine vswr value here so i hope it is very clear to see the problems for vswr measurement by the next lecture we shall continue with the same topic to practice one more problem for more such information and the knowledge along with the practice of problems for microwave engineering if you require you can subscribe to ekda channel thank you